So today, the, was it the first Saturday, so we're back here again in St. Mary. Today, the feast of St. Teresa of the child Jesus. So, saying her mass today. So, probably something good for that. Of course, this mass in Asia is a first class feast since he is a patron of all the missions of the world, or the patrons of the missions throughout the world, and a reminder that, that the only way for souls to be saved, the only way souls to be saved is by the power of the river of grace, which is like the blood of the holy mystical body of Christ, and that is the prayer. The prayer is the lifeblood of our mystical body, and that this, that St. Teresa of the child Jesus never once traveled to the missions, and yet she is a patroness of all missions in our holy church, and that uh, she and St. Francis Xavier. St. Francis Xavier did travel with his body and with his hand of priesthood, and she traveled with her soul, and she continues to travel, and she is the one that brings about the great conversions of the Holy Roman, the Holy Roman Catholic Church in the 20th and now the 21st century. And so it's a great feast in Asia uh, for the feast of St. Teresa of the child Jesus, the power of her soul and her little way. But also today, this great missionary day, is also a holy anniversary in my own life. And um, eight years ago today uh, was one of the good days, very happy days of my life, the day in which I received the expulsion from the Society of St. Brian's of Den from my superiors in Asia, for standing for the truth, for standing for the gospel. And uh, Father Giselle, Father Francis Giselle was with me. And he, I received my expulsion letter today. I went down to pick it up, and he wouldn't go and pick his up. He said, uh, if they want to bring it, they'll have to bring it to me. So he received his expulsion letter tomorrow. Father Francois Giselle, on the Feast of St. Francis, October the 4th. Then I received my expulsion today, the Feast of St. Teresa of the Child Jesus on October the 3rd, 2012. And so that we're considering this condemnation, and condemnation is likened to it. These are great blessings, certainly consolations, because to be able to be received, to be able to be uh, condemned for Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ said that when they say what a matter of evil against you, for my name's sake, that your reward is great in heaven indeed. And that one of the great errors of 2012, they don't talk about it anymore. It's interesting, they forgot about it. But in 2012, we're having priest meetings and discussions, and they're saying, we want to bring justice to Archbishop Lefebvre. Now, eight years have passed, and they forgot about justice, and they forgot about Archbishop Lefebvre. But remember in our priest meeting in early April of 2012, when there were the priests of Asia gathering together, they said, this is, do we want the excommunications to be lifted? For Archbishop Lefebvre, they never lifted it for him. They forgot about that. We want the excommunication of Archbishop Lefebvre to be lifted. And we want there to be justice done. And I remember in the priest meeting, speaking to the other priests, said, that's a bunch of baloney. This is not at all what we want. If you go back in time, you'll discover that St. Athanasius was excommunicated three separate times by Pope Liberius. And in those days, it wasn't like the excommunication of Archbishop Lefebvre. He was never excommunicated by name. It was only a declaration of a latte's intense excommunication, but it was still done, it was still, it was never excommunicated by name, and that the, the excommunication was only declared latte's intensia. But nonetheless, in the days of Athanasius, Pope Liberius said, I condemn you, Athanasius, Athanasius, I hate your guts, Athanasius, you make me sick, and I am going to be, I am in communion with the Arians. Now, was this excommunication of Liberius three times done? Was it ever lifted in the last 1,700 years since it was done? No, it was never lifted. Why, what is the glory of St. Paul? It's a sword that was used to chop off his head. What is the glory of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre? It is a decree of excommunication. What is the glory of St. Joan of Arc? It's fire that she received by the command of a Catholic bishop. That is the glory of Joan of Arc, her condemnation, and why we call her saint, condemned by the church. It is the glory of our Jesus of the Fed, that he was condemned by the church for being faithful to the church. And remember that 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus Christ was condemned. 
He was not only condemned by Pilate, the pagan, by Herod, the pig, but he was condemned by the high priest who was put in authority by himself. He was condemned by the Holy Father. And so being condemned by the Holy Father and being condemned by the representative of the church is a tradition that goes way back. Goes way back to the time that our first king and master and God and high priest went to church, went to his battlefield. Under what state did he go to his glory? What did he say when he was lifted up on the cross on Good Friday? He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all things to myself. And he also, speaking about it later on, said to the apostles and to the others, the Son of Man is about to be glorified. What is the glorification of the Son of Man? He's not glorified by the rock. We don't go to celebrate the rock that was rolled back. We don't go to celebrate the stone where the resurrection took place. If you can go and visit, it's a nice place to visit. The angel said it was a nice place to visit. Look at the place where they laid him. But it is not the glory of Jesus Christ. His glory is his condemnation. And in his condemnation by men, he showed his fidelity to God. And throughout the entire history of the world, there must always be representatives of Jesus Christ who stand for the truth and become condemned because of it. And so while there are many weaknesses and many faults and many sins and failings in my life, today was not one of them. Today was a day when eight years ago there was an excommunication from our society. It's a small excommunication with a little broken E, but it's still something. Thrown out from our society at St. Pius X because of standing for the truth. And tomorrow, our Father Giselle, standing with me side by side, also was expelled. And then a few days later, for slightly different reasons, but still it happened a few days later, October the 8th, our Bishop Williamson was also expelled. And we were all three expelled in the same week. But what were we expelled for? Standing for the truth. We were expelled for holding in the line of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, staying faithful to our society's pious intent, standing against the errors and heresies of the modern world, which are infiltrating the Holy Society of St. Pius X found of Archbishop Lefebvre. And now they've infiltrated it through and through. Since that day, what has happened? The SSPX mainstream has gotten more and more liberal. It's gotten closer and closer to the modernism of Rome. It's gotten further and further away from the holy truth. It is now a very much likened to the remainder of the, the infiltrated and compromised uh, societies, like the Institute of Christ the King and, and the, the, uh, the, the fraternity of St. Peter, all of which have owed their existence. The good that is being done by the fraternity of St. Peter, we are against them and their errors. We are against them and their liberalism and modernism. But the fraternity of St. Peter priests are hearing confessions. They're absolving sins. They're anointing the dying. They're celebrating the Latin Tridentine Mass, even if it's in a setting of compromise. And whatever good is done by them is because Marcel Lefebvre stood up. Father Gruner pointed this out to me in 2012. He said, consider the good of the Society of St. Pius X and the good of our Church of Lefebvre. We know it's a good work of the Holy Church because it didn't benefit just the SSPX. One of the great lies that is stated in the official documentary put out by the Society, our Trisha Marcel Lefebvre, priests of the Society stand in front of the camera and they say, I know the Archbishop. And the reason why he did those, those, extra, those uh, consecrations, the why he consecrated those four bishops, was to keep the Society of St. Pius X alive. Many people do all kinds of things to keep their house from burning. Many people do all kinds of things to keep their family alive. And many of those souls now burn in hell. Archbishop Lefebvre was a saint. Archbishop Lefebvre did not consecrate four bishops in order to save the society of St. Pius X. He consecrated four bishops to save souls in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. He consecrated four bishops to save the Catholic priesthood. He consecrated four bishops to preserve the priesthood and the mass and the faith of all times to the next generation, which is his duty as a priest of God. The priest of God must have children. His children must be children of the Spirit. 
And these children are passed on by the priesthood. And he passed on, the children. he made it possible with a continuation of the priesthood for the church. And the good, the excommunication that he received was for the good of the whole church. And not only did the people within the SSPX benefit, but our enemies benefited. Then those who don't care benefited. All souls in the entire church benefited from Arsenal of Ebb standing up and allowing himself to be excommunicated. This is for the benefit of souls and for the benefit of the church. It is to his glory. In a very small way, when Father Giselle and I stood up in 2012, in a very public manner, we were publicly excommunicated by the society. Father Giselle and I. We were publicly excommunicated, and Bishop Williamson, the three of us. But we were publicly excommunicated at the same time. We were publicly excommunicated, why? Because these men are standing, they're saying the society has changed, and it's no longer following the truth. And it's true, it has. These men are criticizing the modernist direction with Rome, but they're not going to turn that direction around. They're criticizing the false teachings of Bishop Fillet. In my excommunication letter, and Bishop Father Giselle's excommunication letter was very similar, you said that Archbishop Bishop Fillet said that 95% of the council was good. And I did say he said that. And you said that, that, that the other erroneous statements of Bishop Fillet. And he, I did say he said that, and he said that. In the communication letter, in the letter of condemnation, no denial was made. They didn't say, Archbishop Bishop Fillet didn't say that. They didn't say this wasn't true. They accepted the truth of every single criticism made by myself and Father Giselle. Each criticism was accepted as true, and then we were condemned anyway. So in any case, today is the anniversary of the 2012 letter of uh, excommunication, of expulsion from the Society of St. Pius X and the Feast of St. Teresa, the patroness of the missions. And always praying since that day there will be a benefit to souls throughout the whole of the world, that there will be a spreading of the faith throughout the whole of the world, that there will be a continuation in holding on to the truth. No need to change doctrine. And yet we find in the society there is continual change and a continual shifting and a continual going down and a continual liberalization. It doesn't change. It hasn't stopped. And it won't stop unless there's some massive conversion. So in any case, the day of the Feast of St. Teresa, the patroness of the missions, is, is, a, is a glorious day. And we must remember also that we're in a supernatural war. We're in a supernatural war. And it's necessary that there be victim souls. It's necessary that there be prayer. It's necessary that there be suffering in some souls, which they offer up for the conversion of sinners. And remember that we are getting closer and closer to the victory of Mary. We don't know the day or the hour. We do know the battering ram is continually hitting the citadel of modernism, the citadel of Satanism, and it's cracking. And one day the door is going to collapse, the gate is going to collapse, and there'll be a flooding in of grace into that citadel of Satanism, and many souls are going to be pulled out from the devil's snatches, and there will be, from his claws, there shall be a great salvation of many souls. We're heading now into that great fight, we're in it right now, and we must continue to fight. Don't give up in the fight. Continue to knock on the door. Continue to pick the battery rabbit hit against the gate. Continue in the battle. Continue to work for the salvation of souls. Continue to teach the same truth. No need to change it. Continue in the fight. And as we continue in the fight, one day, the citadel of Satanism and modernism and the devil is going to collapse. We follow the rule of St. Jerome. St. Jerome says, I will preach the truth if all listen. I will preach the truth if some listen. I will preach the truth if very few listen. And I will preach the truth if no man listens. For I know that God hears and God always listens and he shall judge me on my preaching of the truth when I die. And the truth shall have its victory anyway. And remember also, don't forget the Good Friday situation. Our Lord Jesus Christ was abandoned by his 12 apostles. One of them died and committed suicide, an enemy of God. He was, his holy women stood afar off. They wouldn't stand next to him. Only his mother stayed close. And what 
in this most tragic time, what happened? Total victory. This was the time of the victory. So as remember our Lord said, when you see the cross all around you, when you see challenges all around you, when you see the world falling apart more and more, and the Blessed Virgin Mary said the same thing at Quito, the same thing at La Salette, the same thing at, at Quito, at, at uh, Fatima. When things are getting worse and worse and worse, that means we're closer and closer and closer to the great victory. The other apostles, all, 12, all 11 apostles watched the crucifixion. They were all there. But 10 of them were hiding back in the crowd. Some were in the crowd. St. Peter in the crowd, the others in the crowd. But St. John was standing at the foot of the cross. He was right there. The only apostle to be right there. And he was only there because he didn't know why. He was only there because he loved the Blessed Virgin Mary. He was only there to be next to her. And that's where she was. She was in the middle of the fight. Therefore, he was in the middle of the fight. He didn't want to be in the middle of the fight. He was a coward like the rest of them. He just had connections so that they would, he knew he would not be harmed. But he knew, stay next to Mary. That's the safest place to be in a fight. And so he was. And now we're in the great final fight before her victory in the church. Stay close to her. Stay close to her son and hear his words as he speaks them from the cross. And there is great victory coming. But the great victory comes only when the things are falling apart. Only when it seems we're near death. This is the history of our church. Both Old and New Testament. Not just today. Will it persevere and therefore not be disturbed? How did the great martyrs die? They were killed by their enemies. And then came their glory. That's how our Lord Jesus Christ died. And so when our Bishop of Feb died, he was still thought to be excommunicated. He is in heaven, seeing God face to face. He is not excommunicated. And he doesn't need the excommunication to be lifted. God isn't looking for the paperwork. The angels aren't looking for the paperwork. The saints aren't looking for the paperwork. Fools with red tape are looking for the paperwork. And the problem with paper is it burns. It's a flammable material, and that's good stuff for hell. No flammable material in heaven, except hearts. Hearts burn, but they burn with love. They burn with charity, they burn with faith. That's the flammable material that's needed in heaven, but don't worry about the paperwork. Don't worry about the paperwork. Stay firm in the faith. Don't be worried about the papers that say we're excommunicated, the papers that say that we're schismatic, the papers that say that we're outside the church, the papers that say we're all compromisers and whatever else the papers want to say. Stand firm. And we all pray the devotion to St. Teresa of the Child of Jesus, the great the little flower, the flower that has, has brought about so many conversion of souls during her short 24 years on this earth. She's still converting souls to this day. And we pray for the little flower to teach us how to follow her little way to God in this time of, of battle. Let's look at all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.